Hey guys! Welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in. You know, before we get started, I have to ask, how are you doing today? How are you feeling? Have you looked in the mirror and told yourself that you're beautiful? If not, stop this video, go ahead and do that, and then come back and we can get started. Yes, so in this is the second installment of our series. We're going to be talking about all things scores. Finally. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Um, we're gonna be super transparent with y'all. We give y'all numbers. Yeah. And be me steps. And it's so crazy. <laughs> like I never thought that I would share. Yeah. Share. I had no plan. <laughs> Honestly. That. And then you have a platform. Everyone, you're everyone has to, be to win. Everyone has to win. Okay. <laughs> so. And so, yeah. I mean, we already met. So. I mean, honestly, nothing really matters at this point. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, but yeah. So we're gonna talk about scores. Um, hopefully you. For those of you who may have taken some of the board exams already, this is serves as an inspiration for you guys if you didn't do as great as you would have wanted. Um, and for other people, hopefully this is a confidence boost for you as well. Yeah. <laughs> it may work both ways. Yeah, and also we do have a video on our step one journey. We don't talk about how we study or anything like that, but it's just a mode of inspiration because we just talk about our struggles and the dark times <laughs> that we had when studying for step one. So if you just want some encouragement or some further inspiration, then go check out that. Yes, because I know people are dedicated right now for yeah. both step one and step two, mm -hmm. so this could be the right old time for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's hop right in then. So, <laughs> so first and second year, we, look, <laughs> that don't even matter. It don't even matter, y'all. Honestly, like, no one's going to ask no one about asks your me first and second year. The only time that first and second year matter is if you want to be AOA. So, yes. if an ALA is like Alpha, something, Omega, what is it? Alpha, Omega, Alpha, I think. Yeah. Sure. It's basically like an honor society for yeah. school. Um, and so, in order to qualify for that, then you have to get a certain number of honors in your first and second and third year. So, if you're trying to be ALA, then your first and your second year definitely matter. But if you're not, which we weren't, <laughs> and honestly, like it can help your application if you're going into something competitive like ortho, derm, neurosurgery. neurosurgery, but, and it looks good if you go into other things, but it's not making it break you. Like neither one of us were AOA and we still matched our top choices. I personally like never had the goal of being so, AOA, y'all. I feel like that was going to be too much pressure on me. I know, and when I was in the first and second year studying and stuff, I did my very best. Yeah. And I was like, my very best is not have to be AOA. That's just a standard that the school yeah. has created or society whatever has created for me i had to come to terms with the fact that my best was not anyway, <laughs> anyway and that's, yeah. that's okay <laughs> but if that's what you want and that's what your goal is shoot for it for right. sure because we strive for excellence yes but don't beat yourself up if, if you, you don't, don't reach it exactly because it's not going to be that huge component of your application on no. right. it's literally a check mark <laughs> it's literally a check mark exactly rest. so first second year do your best leave it at that yes third year matters that matters so sure. third year is a year that probably matters the most um in addition to your step scores mm -hmm. so third year is when you have your different clerkships or rotations which is when you go through different specialties mm -hmm. and you take it mbme like we talked about before at the end of those rotations mm -hmm. the scores that you get on those mbmes matter <laughs> and for our school <laughs> we love our school but our school puts our exam scores on our MSPE, which is like a little transcript that you get that you send for your ERES application when you um, apply to residency. Yeah. And so our scores are printed there. Our the percentile is on there, like how we compare it to other students who took it at the same time. And then our evaluations, which is like our comments from like your preceptor, your attendings is on there. A lot of people, everybody has like the comments, but mm -hmm. not everybody has the scores. Our school puts the scores on there, so. <laughs> It hurts you or it helps yeah. you. They put the score and they put how you compare yeah, to like your Yeah, like the percentile classes. that you are compared to everybody else. Yes. Which can also <laughs> hurt you. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they do it, honestly, but they have their reasons and whatever. Yeah. Um, so, but not all schools do that, so you just have to see, like, what your school does. But Be all aware. schools have, like, the comments. So you want to make sure that the comments are amazing. Yeah. And, like, what your attendees and preceptors are saying about you are good things because it's going to show up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so third year really matters. You want to make sure you do your best. You want to make sure you do as well as you can on the MBMEs, even though you're going to be tired and you know, you're not going to study. You're going to have to push yourself to do it because it matters. Um, so, yeah, now we can read those scores. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the, at the first and second year, you take step one. Mm -hmm. I remember opening that envelope, not envelope, that email, and I was just like, I was, in, I was right here in my bedroom. And I was like, I've been on the clock all, but I was just like, I opened the score and I was like, 
Really? <laughs> like, for real? I got a 223 on step one. <laughs> <laughs> this is bringing back a lot of emotions. <laughs> so I, I, I was at home when I opened up my step one score. Um, and for those who haven't watched the other video, like I ended up taking time off, like just a mm -hmm. month. Um, just to study, to have extra time to study for step one because I just wasn't in the right mental space to take it. Like an extra month. Yeah, an extra month. I didn't have to do a little bit of absence or anything. It was just like an extra month to study and like I got an elective to cover all that other stuff. Um, so I just pushed back third year like a month, but it all ended up working out. Um, so me taking that extra time, during that time I was seeing scores that I liked and that I would be happy getting. I didn't reach like my dream score, but I had reached my goal score. And so I was like, okay, you, girl, you ready? You ready to take right. step one? And so um, when I opened up that, <laughs> when I opened up the email, yeah. I thought I was going to see at least like the last score that I got on like my practice exam yeah. or something. But I saw way below that. <laughs> so, and I was on the phone with my mom and I remember just like, just crying. And I was, I was like, but I wasn't even yeah. sad. I was angry. Like when I tell you I was angry and I was angry at God, I was like, you did not take me through all of this right. and have me take a month, uh, take an extra month and like have me feeling good, seeing the scores that I had and then give me this score. So I was just angry. I was very upset. I was right. very angry. In that moment, I was like, you're not going to match. You're not gonna, you know, all those thoughts were just going through my head. But I ended up getting a 219. Which is not the lowest of the lowest scores, mm -hmm. but it's lower than I wanted. So like the national average is a 230. And so that was like yeah. my goal just to get a 230. Yeah. And on my last practice exam, I had gotten like a 235. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, girl, you good. Yeah. So when I saw that 219, like my heart just <laughs> dropped and it mm -hmm. sank. But I also knew that I was just going to have to do more and be more competitive in my application. That's the thing. As so. soon as I saw the score and I, like, I processed it probably a couple days later, I was like, I just work harder now. Yeah. Like, I literally, it was like, I was in, like, go, go mode. mode. <laughs> I was literally in go mode. I was literally, yeah, like, probably yes. a couple of hours after I calmed myself down, I was emailing people about research. That's real. <laughs> that is like, real. You can't, like, you can feel the emotions, but in that moment, you really have to, like, step outside of yourself yeah. and get the job done. Like, get yeah. business handled. Because you can't just wallow and be like, I'm just going to pour me. <laughs> like, you can't do that. Like, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. <laughs> In this situation, is not going to yeah. work. So, especially if you know that you want to do something that's competitive and that you are really passionate about, that's not going to cut it at all. So, yeah, we just went into go mode and we connected with a lot of different people. Shout out a lot of different yeah. people. And we're going to talk more about, like, how we networked, what we yeah. did, how we made ourselves competitive. In the next video, yeah. But, yeah, so then, that just goes yeah. to show you that, like, your step one score is important, but it's not the end all. So let's transition to step two. <laughs> <laughs> no, MBME scores. Oh, MBME scores. Mm -hmm. So MBME scores. Um, that's in third year. Your that's in hands. third year. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let me. <laughs> the oh. thing is, I was upset with myself during these MBMEs too, because I'm like, girl, you can be so much better. But honestly, I feel like my average for MBME scores was like a 75. I did well. I did really well on psych. And I did really well with family medicine. Mm -hmm. And then peds, I got like a higher 70, I think. But like, other than that, yeah, then like, yeah, so for psych and for family, it was like in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Anything else was in the 70s. Right. Like mid 70s and up. And compared to our classmates, mm. I was average or below average. Yeah. So I was above average in psych, I was above average in family. Um, but everything else, I was either average or below average. And even in the field that I'm going into, I did not even honor. I did not even high pass. So, yeah. like, that goes to show you that your scores are important, again, but they don't matter. Cause, but some schools also only interview you if you've honored the specialty that you're going into or if you have a certain really? sport and specialty, which is why I didn't get interviews at some places. Yeah. But that should not stop you. Nah, it shouldn't. So, yeah. Um, for me, <laughs> every time I open that MVB PDF, it was like sitting at 70, 72. Like, not gonna lie, I probably, the highest MME in that range was an 85 because of peds. And I was shocked. I had to look at it multiple times. I was like, for real? I got it? For real? That's my first B ever <laughs> during their year. Um, luckily, not all of our um, rotations rely super heavily, or like the majority of the percentages on the MME. Some of it is based more on evaluations. And so I ended up high passing and honoring a lot of 
rotation yeah. that I thought I would have just passed because of my MBME score. But definitely look into what your school breaks, how it breaks down their collection percentages, because that's going to depend on how it shows up on your transcript. Yeah, um, that's true. Because even though like I got mid seventies mm -hmm. or higher, like I still high passed almost or honored almost all of yeah. my rotations. Yeah. So OB unfortunately was like one of the ones that I only passed. I think that was the only. And one their breakdown was very which is hard. so. I, and I was so mad because I was like point some points. Like I was like point something away from like high passing, but mm -hmm. it was just because of my MBME because I honored like for all the rotations I got mostly like I honored most of my evals. Mm -hmm. So I got like all three. So almost all of my evals for every rotation. So like that end of my grade was amazing, but the MBME always either like brought me down or like barely made me like high pass mm -hmm. or whatever. So, yeah, and honestly for me, I, because like, like when you would do practice questions on UWorld and all that stuff, like I always compare myself anyways, because like you see the, see the national percentage yeah. that people did. I'm just like, this is like a setup for, for, comparisons. for comparisons. I hated it so much. And like, just seeing how you ranked in comparison to your classmates and MVMEs doesn't make you feel good either. Mm -hmm. Um, I would just say in those <laughs> moments, focus, like after like the fourth rotation, I kept getting seven twos. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna be okay. I don't know what else I can do. I'm studying, I'm doing what everyone is telling me to do. I'm, I feel like I know the information just when it comes to a test question. I just, for some reason, it doesn't really sit well with my spirit. You know, I'm getting the answer right. But that doesn't make me any less or more smart than the next person. So I didn't put my worth into them and me scores, to be honest. I just did my best and I was like, whatever, at least I passed. And I kept the pushing. And that's the thing, because at the end of the day, like, it matters what people say about you, like your work ethic. And that is what comes through through your evaluation yep. and like in your comments. Yep. So, like, reading my transcript, you just think I'm the smartest, yes. <laughs> like, hardest working person. Empathy. And I Compassion. am, but like, my scores <laughs> just didn't reflect that. Right. But my comments do. And my patients say good things. Yes. <laughs> so, and that's honestly what matters. Like, yes, you have to pass. Yes, you have to just do your best to get, like, mm -hmm. average or good scores. But, like, at the end of the day, it's what people think about you. And it's what you're, like, your, worth, your work ethic that matters. So, just, like, do as best as you can on the NBMEs. But if you don't honor everything, like, don't stress yourself out. Mm -hmm. Period. And then after third year, we had step two. In the midst of COVID, child. Get up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that step one was so traumatic until I took step, two. step two. Like until I had to go into dedicated for step two, I was like avoiding studying mm -hmm. simply because of how traumatic step one was for me. Like it was so this is such a dark place in my life. I was like, wow, avoidant tendencies jumping out right now. But um, yeah, so they really hard for step two. We our stuff got kept getting pushed back, our test dates and stuff. And I opened it. I actually recorded the video. And I personal Instagram but I opened it with my boyfriend my best friend and I ended up getting a 239 I was a little disappointed with that score too I was like at least I, I thought it was like a 241 <laughs> or like something I want my goal score was like 240 um and I was like one point shy of that which wasn't a big deal um but I knew that at least I improved <laughs> at least I improved that's that's what kept me like not um not not getting down on myself in that moment I was like you improved and you're gonna be just fine like you'll be fine. Your mentors have looked at your step one score. They told you what you need to get for step two and you, you surpassed that goal, so you'll be fine. But yeah. Yeah, so I have the same thing. And it's funny because my mom is the one that pointed out that like I didn't want to study for step two. Cause I guess she kept asking me like how studying was going and like I was trying to lie. And I'm like, I'll just had it all together. And she's like, you're not studying, are you? And I was like, no. I was like, no, I'm not. And she was like, you know, what happened with step one is not going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And, like, her just saying those words, I was like, dang, like, I really, I'm scared. I'm scared of, like, having this repeat itself. I'm scared about going to, like, that same dark place and just that trauma that was associated with that. Like, I don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. And so I was scared to study. But, like, once we got over that hump and then we had plenty of time with, like, quarantine and stuff to, like, get together and start studying. Because originally I was supposed to take my test in, like, May or mm -hmm. June. And then it got, I didn't end up taking it until August. Which was fine. I feel like everything worked out in the end. But I definitely studied hard. So I went back through, like, New World again. Um, I was watching, like, OME videos all the time. And went through those, like, twice. So I studied my butt off. And I just focused more on questions this time. Because, like, I didn't really have time to do much else. And I didn't want to waste time. Um, and so I ended up getting a 247 on step two. And so I was so happy. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to lie. So I was a little upset. <laughs> I, was a little, I was a little disappointed. 
and just because like I was studying so hard and I had like such high hopes for this for the step two and like my goal was a 250 mm -hmm. and so when I saw 247 I was like dang Short. It happened again. Three points short. Like, because yeah. I feel like a theme for me during med school was just like, you get so close, but you don't make it. So like, you have this goal, but you never achieve that goal. You mm -hmm. just do, you do just enough to get where you're supposed to be, but it's never like what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw my step two score, I was like, <laughs> and so in my mind, I was like, dang, like, you're not going to get your first choice, girl. Like, you're going to be like, it's just going to be a cycle. Right. But, of course, that didn't happen. But, um, so yeah, so after I got over the disappointment, mm -hmm. and I talked to my friends and my mom, and they were like, girl, like, <laughs> you did great. <laughs> like, you're okay. So yeah, so I increased almost 30 points from step one, so it is possible. Yes. It's very possible. Step two is a lot better than step one because you have all of third year that you prepared for it. Yeah. So, like, I mean, for step two, they say you have the first two years that you prepared for it, but, like, step one is just so random, mm -hmm. whereas, like, step two, you really do see the things that you um, studied for during, like, your clerkships. So, it's yeah. a lot easier to study for. It's still hard. I mean, it's still a board exam, mm -hmm. but um, it's a lot more doable. And there's a reason why they're making step one pass it. Let's keep it up. Because it doesn't make sense. It's a lot of, of a lot. And it's just like, it's so random. So it's like, if you have this topic on your test that you just looked at, then you'll, then you'll do better yeah. than somebody who didn't look at that stuff for like it's a couple of so weeks much or like a month. Because it's so much information, you can't put everything on there. And some of it is just brute memorization, like literally just memorization. So literally like you have to memorize all of our state. And that's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. People do it. People, People do it. I don't know how. People do it. But for me, that's my brain doesn't work that and way. And honestly, so. as an anesthesiologist, the information is not going to help me that much. <laughs> like, I'm going to be learning on the job yeah. for most of it, you know. And we're going to have our own anesthesia and ob and board exams so you yeah. don't worry about And that. other books that yeah. we use that are actually, like, more beneficial. And, like, you learn. I learn best through hands-on training. Yes. And most people learn best through hands-on training. Yes. And that's what we're going to get. Yes. So. Um, and hopefully, like, you find people on social media who also are transparent about their story. Some people will fail step one or step two multiple mm -hmm. times, and they still match. Yeah. They still are able to, you know, pursue that dream that they've always wanted to. Mm -hmm. You just have to seek out those people and not be too bogged down by, like, the Reddit folks who are, yeah. like, all getting 270s. That's true. Them. It's so easy, like, in the med school community just to see the people who do extremely well. But what you don't realize is that that's, like the minority that's yeah that's a minority like yeah. the majority of people are struggling too. are struggling get average scores or do below average and the people who get lower scores don't share that information yeah. that's why you don't hear it and you don't know right. about it it's shame like around it. it yeah so like that's one thing we want is just for like the medical community just to mm -hmm. be more transparent because honestly like more people get those scores mm -hmm. than not so that's why we're yeah. being very open and very transparent because we know that this is like the majority. Yeah. So. And also like if you do, if you are getting like great scores, I wouldn't place your worth in that either. Like mm -hmm. you are more than a score whether you get amazing or poorly. Like it's more than that. Because when it comes to interview season, they don't really care about that. They're asking about you and what, you, mm -hmm. what makes you excited as a person and what's your hobbies and why you're a great fit for their program. They don't care about your score after it that. It gets you in the door. Yeah. Yes, but after that, what else you got to offer? You got people schools? <laughs> like, what's happening? Because, like, I mean, there's people who don't match and get 260s. So. And they don't, <laughs> they don't tell you about the interview trail. So clearly there's more to it than just your score. So yeah. we just say all that to say that don't be so hard on yourself if you don't hit your dream score, if you don't hit that goal score, because there's more to your application and to you personally than just the score. So. And that's our gem for this video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you picked up what we put down. Um, if you have any more specific questions, please don't feel free to comment below. Feel free to DM us. Yeah. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with your friends. Bye. Routine. And we will see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.